how to break free from addiction. So um, this is a, a series of, of advice that's based uh, in, in part on my experiences as, a, as an ex-smoker. So my addiction was to, to nicotine, which obviously is not as damaging as, as cocaine and other drugs, but uh, apparently is similarly addictive. And so, um, so for starters, what we'll do is look at different types of addiction just to get a sense of uh, what addiction is and the forms that it can take. So, for starters, looking at gambling addiction, um, gambling addiction is extremely, extremely powerful and it, it destroys lives. Um, one anecdote, uh, I had a, a friend who, who was studying uh, uh, psychology in college and she worked um, in a psych ward um, part-time <clears throat> part time, and uh, the psych ward was specialized in dealing with uh, uh, addicts and, and so on, and especially uh, gambling addicts. And so she was telling me how um, the gambling addicts would gamble for, for anything and everything, but also the, the, the ones that were addicted to uh, coin, coin slot machines would take quarters and put them in the Coke machine and then press the coin release just to listen to the coin falling. And that, that was one of the aspects of their addiction. So, so the main thing here is to notice how um, you, it's, it's not even a question necessarily of, uh, of, of being physically addicted to something. There's a mental addiction that's there even when there is absolutely no possible physical addiction. So, um, and so we'll be coming back to that. But um, uh, with nicotine and tobacco, um, it's, uh, it's interesting to see or to notice that uh, nicotine doesn't give you a high. Um, and in fact, what happens is that um, when, you're, when you're suffering from withdrawal for, of, of nicotine, you feel terrible. And when you get the nicotine, the pain goes away. And the pain going away uh, feels like pleasure. And, and that's part of what makes you, what makes you be addicted. addicted. But uh, one small thing about uh, cigarette addiction is that there is no reason nowadays for people to still be smoking because you could be smoking with a vaporizer which basically just uh, heats the nicotine to the vaporization point but not to the point of burning so it's several hundred degrees cooler than than uh, than the fire than, than fire and uh, so you don't get the cancer causing uh, uh, chemicals and you don't get the bad breath um, you can smoke anywhere, you're not bothering people, you're not causing cancer. It's, it's insane, especially the bad breath and, and stinky mouth is, is something that, you know, you can still get. It's not like being on the patch. I mean, you'll still be addicted to nicotine uh, if you're smoking with a vaporizer, but you, you won't have the, the, health, the negative health effects. So um, it's one step in a good direction. But uh, then we have alcohol, which is extremely addictive and... Um, uh, and, and destructive to, to lives. Um, one thing that's interesting, just as an aside for people who are al alcoholics, is that um, when you drink alcohol, you're getting a lot of sugar as well. And um, when you cut out alcohol, you're cutting out a lot of calories. Uh, and when you get hungry, you'll be, that'll be one extra drive for wanting to get the sugar that your brain needs. And so, um, so if, if I was a recovering alcoholic, I would be focusing on, um, on making sure that I'm eating enough, um, and that, uh, but that I'm eating slow, slow sugars. So, um, whole wheat bread or, or, or bread with butter or, or oil, because it, it slows down the digestion. Um, uh, there are a lot of things that, that, um, that, that you can do to optimize this, but, but in any case, you want to try when whatever you're addicted to. You want to try to think of what are the things that can that can give me a um, uh, uh, you know a push in the wrong direction. And so, if you're if you're eating junk food and your your sugars are going like this, they're yo-yoing because you get a, a huge chunk of sugar digested very very quickly. It all turns to fat, and then and you get a, an insulin reaction, and you crash back down. And then you're out of sugar and you're in a bad mood and, and you're cranky and, and you're really starving. And maybe uh, you'll be you know, tempted to have some, something to drink. So in any case, then moving on, we have cocaine, heroin, speed, meth, things like that. Um, uh, these are, are drugs that, uh, that are so addictive that, I mean, I think many, if not most people, end up prostitutes. And, and the thing that's really... Um, 
worth bearing in mind is that when you're uh, uh, well, addicted to, to heroin or cocaine or, or, or meth, um, you're not only going to be a, a prostitute, you're going to be happy to be a prostitute. You're going to be a man or woman who is prostituting themselves and getting effed up the ass, and you're going to be thinking to yourself, oh good, I only need 10 more of these and I'll have enough to buy my drug. So, so that's the, the road you're going towards, and maybe that you've traveled. Um, the past doesn't really matter, but the future does. And, uh, or rather, you learn from the past, but you don't focus on it too much, right? But, uh, but don't, make, don't give yourself any illusions as to what cocaine is. It's, it's a hell of a drug. So, so in general, um, the one thing to notice in, 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 just the, in what we looked at is that uh, there are physical and mental aspects to addiction, and they're 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 separate, um, and and uh, you can kind of get past the physical addiction in a few months or a few years. The mental addiction might be harder to to uh, uh, to defeat, and uh, and you want to be focused on both and, and and target both and understand both to to really be successful, and uh, and one other thing to keep in mind is that. Um, all addictive substances should be avoided, and um, you know, massively multiplayer uh, role-playing games are also addictive and, and destructive to, to, to a healthy, balanced life, and, and should also be avoided. And so, so, um, and I think that for someone who's having a lot of trouble dealing with an addiction, one easy way out that's terrible is to replace that one addiction with another one. So someone who's the cocaine addict may turn to meth and then be happy because they're not a cocaine addict anymore. Maybe it's cheaper, you know, but now you're getting meth mouth, you know, so, so it's not an improvement. So, so uh, no matter whether you're addicted or not, uh, you should be actively avoiding addictive, destructive things. So, so in any case, um, looking at the, at the physical addiction, what we can do to minimize it and to understand it and to defeat it. So one of the things to do is a little bit like what I was talking about with uh, nicotine, where um, it's true that with, with cocaine and, uh, and other drugs you get a, a real high, but the, the, that high basically is followed by a crash. And, and it's when you're, when you're in, in the low that, um, that you're, you're, you're jonesing for, for your drug. And, um, and in fact, it's very much, it ends up being very much like nicotine, where what you what you need and what you're addicted to is not really the high of the drug as much as just the fact that it takes away the pain. So, um, uh, so you're you're actually uh, you're you're focusing your 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 addiction is not coming so much from a positive as it is from a negative being canceled out. And uh, so so the desire that you have for the, for your drug should should be lessened by that understanding of the fact that that it's it's you're you're actually not getting anything good you're just getting less pain but but the thing to to understand about the physical addiction is that your uh your 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 system is normally let's say like this or it's it's just basically going a little bit up and down and then you start taking a drug and it takes you so far out of your normal state that um you're what what happens in, in the body is that there's negative feedback and, and all sorts of feedback mechanisms to not only like if, if let's say your your normal range for for your your uh, neurotransmitters and other things in your body um, and your hormones everything else uh, but let's say your neurotransmitters for for, for pain with with um, and and uh, well-being with heroin um, if it's normally in this range but all of a sudden you shoot it up here your body adapts by changing the scale at which it measures things right. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, being just in this range is, is no longer, it doesn't have the same meaning anymore. It's as if everything gets compressed, right? And um, so, so the thing is that your body will naturally come back to where it was before if you give it enough time. And so you're suffering when you're, when you're having a, uh, when you're jonesing for your drug, but taking the drug will only 
reinforce the the pain and, and give you more pain the next day because you, you, it always takes more drug and and it has less if, less effect because your body is adapting to it and it's it's recognizing that this this huge shoot up is actually something that becomes normal and, and everything else is relative to it afterwards but but over a period of, of weeks and months of, of not taking the drug you might and you might be you know you might be in something that that has crashed massively and that's that's a really painful state but you're, if, if you don't take the drug and you, you stay in, 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 in your, your normal uh, uh, state or, or inputs and so on, um, you're slowly but surely going to go back to that middle line that you used to be at. So, so that's one of the things to focus on, that um, your, your body and your mind is trying to remove pain and you have to understand deep down inside that the pain is going away um, day by day, uh, and that the pain will only ever go away truly if you cut it out and you you slowly get back to that that's that that good spot, um, um, and and um, uh, but the the uh, the other thing to keep in mind is also that uh, for example a nick fit will only last a minute or so, and uh, maybe other drugs will will last longer because they they hurt they hurt more but. Um, but there, there's, there's, it's something kind of interesting where it's, it's not, it's, the body is able to deal with pain very effectively. And, um, but what happens is that you have a, a, pro, a, pro, a process or a part of your brain, it's, it's the subconscious, that all of a sudden latches on to the fact that part of you wants to take the drug, even though you know you shouldn't, part of you wants it. So, um, so what happens is that you have a baseline amount of pain that, that you're that you're suffering from. And that part of you that wants to take the drug latches onto that and all of a sudden is kind of raising an alarm in your body with huge anxiety and it's telling you, oh my God, you've got to fix this, fix it, fix it, fix it, deal with it, do something. And um, and but in fact your your blood is still pumping, you're breathing, you're 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 not dying, right? And so so it's a little bit like the boy who cried who cried wolf. Um, you're that that nicotine fit or that, that 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 fit that you get from time to time that huge spike that seems I mean that level of, of intensity and, and pain is not something that you feel you could deal with if it were to be permanent right you would say to yourself I have to give I have to give in and but if you know that it's only going to last a minute or five minutes or whatever time it is it's only going to last an hour no longer than that I I don't know what it is for for any given drug but but um, if you know that it's only going to last a certain amount of time, then, then automatically it becomes something manageable because it's no longer just feeling and being in the moment and thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, this hurts so much, I've got to get out of here. I've got to do something, I've got to make that call or I've got to do, you know. Uh, it changes from being that level of intensity to being like, okay, here I am going through this again. I know it's only going to last a minute. And uh, once it's over, I'm going to move on, or, or even before it. And, and this is one, one of the, the best tricks to use for, for, for this is to, um, to tell yourself to just not think about it. Don't, don't think about it. But I'll, I'll go into that in a little bit when we get to the mental aspect. But um, uh, so um, w one other thing that you can do is turn a, um, a negative into a positive. And so... Uh, so when you take a, a drug like cocaine or, or something else, um, uh, you, you, I, I've never taken cocaine, but from what I've read of it, they, you feel like you're on top of the world, and it makes sense based on how it's a neurotransmitter. But, uh, so you feel like you're winning, you feel like you're at the top of the world, you feel like everything is great, but, but in fact you're delusional, you're completely delusional at that point, because you're, you are in fact on the road to prostitution, you're on the road to hell, you're on the road to pain, you're going to be in pain tomorrow, it's going to be worse than it was today. And, um, uh, and, and that's, it's, it's intent, it's complete delusion when you think that you're doing great, you think that you're feeling something good. So what you need to do, I think, to, to really defeat your, your addiction is to analyze and, and break down, you can sit down and write it, uh, to, to be, have more clarity on your thoughts, but um, uh, to understand that even though 
you, it, it feels good because it's a neurotransmitter that's, that's being released that normally only gets released when you're being successful, when you have uh, uh, things going well, that you're just getting the illusion of that and not the reality of it. And um, there's nothing more pathetic than living a life of delusion. That's where you end up, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're thinking you're on, you feel like you're on top of the world, you're the best, you're, everything's great, but in fact you're, you're living in a crack house or you're on your way to a crack house and, and you're, you're so far from, from truly being that, that, that state, that, in that state of, of, of winning and success. And so, um, so you need to really tackle all the positive that you think, all the positives that you think exist and, and to just really deep down break it down to see that, that there is no benefit, there is no good from this, there's no winning, you're losing when you're doing this. And, and if you do that, that'll help that part of you that, that wants it to not want it uh, so much anymore. So, um, um, so moving on to the mental aspect of addiction, um, it's, it's interesting how um, when you have um, decided to quit, you've thought about it, you've been through so much that, that just convinced you, you know logically, excuse me, that you, you have to quit and um, but then all of a sudden you, you, you get a, a, a nick fit or, or, or it's equivalent and um, you get anxious and you start thinking how you should go to the store to wherever it is that you go to to get your drug and uh, you know for, for, for a pack of gum and and, uh, and then once you get there you'll obviously just get the gum maybe and, and get a pack of cigarettes while, while you're at it right and so um, uh, so this, uh, this experience that, that you'll have been through any number of times should teach you um, that, uh, that you can't trust yourself, that, uh, that your subconscious is actually at war with yourself. That's part of the anxiety that you feel. You have a part of you that, that it is convinced that you don't want to, that you want to quit. And you have another part of you that is saying, no, 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 I want, I want that. I want the pain to be gone. And I want the, that false self sense of win. I want that now. And, and I like it. Right. And, um, and so, uh, so it's, it's, it's really, really important to learn not to trust yourself, not to trust your gut, not to trust your, your instinct. I mean, normally when you're hungry, you should eat. Right. And, and, uh, uh, when you're thirsty, you should drink. And when you're, tired you should sleep I mean these are all uh, when you see someone who's attractive you should go talk to her or him you know um, but uh, uh, but this is where so you have all these experiences that teach you that that um, naturally teach you to trust yourself and go with your instincts and so on you have to you have to learn instead when you're when you're dealing with addiction to absolutely not trust yourself um, and and to understand that you're at conflict with yourself and and um, and so what you, uh, what you need to do is to not revisit your decision because um, this is where you also learn that um, you, if you're at a state, in a state of mind where you're not having a, a, a fit for, for your, and, and a craving, then you can think rationally and you can come to a rational conclusion that is, I, I should quit. But if you're having your, your, your withdrawal symptoms, and you think about the same thing again, you're going to come to, you're going to revisit, you're going to change, you're going to realize that you're actually not nearly as rational as you think you are, that, that you basically, that everybody thinks what they want to think to, to a large degree. And so it's at that point of time when you're having your withdrawal symptoms that you cannot revisit your, 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 your decision. You can't think, you, and, and so this is where there is a, um, uh, a mantra you can give yourself, which you just repeat, which is, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about. It. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not thinking about it. Don't think about it. And and you know that can last a minute if need be. But but the the good thing about it is that um, it's actually a huge win to not go there. And and you're actually you're winning. That's all you need to do is to tell yourself, don't think about it when you're having your, 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 your withdrawal. And, and if you stay in that and, it's, and you, can, you can feel good, you can feel like you're succeeding by simply not allowing yourself, you're, 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 that little part of you wants, it wants to push you to revisit, to rethink and, and just rationalize, rationalize and everything. And you don't even, you're not even going, 
even in a, in, a, in a thought process that is anywhere close to where it wants to go, you're staying in that, no, I'm not thinking about it, I'm not thinking about it. I, I can think about it later, maybe, when I'm, when I'm in a normal state of mind, but I'm not going to think about it. And in any case, you don't need to revisit. You know that, that you need to quit. You know why you need to quit. And, and you need to stick with it. And, uh, and um, it's, it's, a, it's an important, it's a, it, this, this trick really, for me, helped me immensely. And it made a huge difference because um, it's, it's very exhausting to be uh, in that state of anxiety and to be kind of fighting with yourself. And to try to, it's not a battle you can really win. And, uh, um, and it's so dis disheartening to, to fail at that. And to go to, to fall back into into all that, that terrible stuff, and to, to then realize that you have no control over yourself, and and so um, you stop all of that, and you you have a win, and you you, you should re, you should congratulate yourself just in in having achieved that, or or, or or in just every time you tell yourself, don't think about it, you're, you're, you should get a smile because you're like, yeah, that's right, I'm beating this. And so, uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a trick that, that works, uh, in, my, in my experience, very, very well. So uh, another thing that definitely helps is things like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or Cocaine Anonymous and things like that. Um, these, uh, these groups are very, very important, um, I think, because um, what you need is reminders of why you made your decision. So if you go to those meetings and the people talk, when the people are, are giving their, their, their talks, and they, I mean, uh, I know quite a few people who are in these programs, and so, so I know it more secondhand, but, but, the, uh, um, but the thing is that the stories that you hear serve to remind you and, and, and reinforce the decision. And so that part of you that, that wants the drug, that's the part you're talking to when, when you're going to those meetings, you're, you're listening and you're, and, 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 and I think a lot of the stories are, are very positive and very, very interesting. You have a lot of interesting insights that you can get from, from, um, from all these people who, 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 um, who go to those meetings. But, um, uh, but it's, it's, it's really important to keep fresh in your mind all the reasons why you are absolutely not going to allow yourself to go back on, in, in that direction. No matter how tempting and how much your body wants it, uh, and your mind as well, you are not. And and so it's it's a categorical. It's it's not something you revisit. And in order to make sure that you're not going to revisit that that decision, you go to the meetings every day if need be to get the reminder and and to to stay in that frame of mind where you're thinking to yourself, I'm not. I'm. I'm. This is this is me. I'm. I'm not going to just be miserably unhappy and be a crack whore I'm going to be something better than that and um, and I think that uh, AA and, and then so on is is, uh, is a good place to meet winners uh, self-improvers people who are, are not stu stupidly destroying themselves and so uh, so it's kind of funny how you know supposedly cool people are people that go to bars and party and do things like that and uh, and in fact they're, they're not cool at all they're on their way to to being miserable and, um, uh, and and delusional. So, um, but that being said, you want to be careful because there are a lot of ex junkies, and you never know. So you know, keep 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 uh, keep yourself uh, on guard to some degree. But um, uh, one other thing about AA is that it's it's very much about catharsis. So catharsis is that that positive that feeling you get when you have an emotional moment, um, or rather, it's it's like someone else tells a story. And the, 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 the intensity of, of, the, of the situation they felt uh, or they describe uh, causes a feeling of catharsis in you. And, and, and it's kind of like the, the watershed where you admit to something or, or where you, you, you realize something and, it, it, and so on. And so uh, Oprah Winfrey has a show that, that, deals, that offers a lot of catharsis. And so it's something that, that is generally... Um, uh, very, it's something that, that we, we enjoy. So I think that you get a lot of that. That's part of the positive that you get from, from the AA meetings. But I think that um, it's also something you can become a little bit too um, in, in, involved in. And I think that it's important to stay towards self-improvement and practical things rather than 
just the, the feeling good, right? Um, uh, but um, so that's where I have uh, a small criticism about AA, which is that um, they, they're very right in saying that you, you have to learn to not trust yourself. So, but it's, but in my opinion, it's a, it's a question of understanding yourself better. It's not that you don't trust yourself. It's that you don't, you don't trust your subconscious. You don't necessarily trust your subconscious. You don't trust the part of you that's that wants to do the drug and that's a druggie and that that wants that no matter what. And and uh, uh, and you really have to learn not to trust yourself in order to be able to break free. But um, but turning everything into don't trust yourself. Um, put your trust in God. Um, I think that it, it, I mean you know. Depending what your thoughts on that are, it, that could be just fine. But but I, in my mind, I think you you need to uh, to to focus still. You, I don't know. I think that the idea is not to be not to end up being say someone who's maybe not drinking, but who's also kind of convinced that they can't do anything right and that they're helpless and and that it's all just uh, it's the will of god and, and you know why did things happen well they happen for a reason and, and so on and, and i think that that um uh to be able to go past to not only not be a druggie or, or an alcoholic but to also be a, a a serial winner in life to have lots of skills and and lots of win and lots of just excellence um you need to still it's it, it's it, the fundamental lesson in, in this is not to not trust yourself, it's to understand yourself better so that you don't you don't fail at basic things that you shouldn't that you won't fail at if you understand yourself better and if you can um, just understand that, that there are times when you listen to your subconscious and you just run with it and there are times where you say, No, I'm not gonna think about that and I'm not gonna go there. So um, because I think that um, uh, you you need to you need to not only um, to be successful and, and to be happy and, and that's the, the point of life is to be happy and so um, not failing is is definitely I mean not falling back into alcoholism or, or, or drug addiction is absolutely necessary to be happy but you want to go past that right and and so you want to keep self-improving and, and 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 getting better and and in any case i mean i think in general um if aa was about self-improvement too much then it would draw away from the core need of just being uh, you know anti-alcoholism or a solution to that so so my criticism is really to be taken with a, a grain of salt and and so on but um uh, uh in general I, I really think that that um Especially for the hard drugs, uh, it's extremely important to go to those meetings, and and you'll feel your you'll know yourself when um, when you're doing better is when you're happy to go there because you know that it's making you feel better, right? Whereas when you're really not close to getting better, you're thinking to yourself, I actually want to do the drugs, so I don't want to go to the meeting, but but um, uh, but but the uh, the the, whether you need to keep going to the meetings for years is something you're going to know but in general it's an entirely positive experience and you meet lots of really cool people um much cooler people than you meet i think in in, in you know, normal normal circumstances and uh and you you get to hear all sorts of amazing shares and and, and stories i mean it's 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 and i think in uh, nearly entirely positive and uh, and uh, going past that and and being um, the the most successful person you can be I mean if you're if you're an addict and you're on your way you're, you're going you're shooting straight down to hell and and uh, um, and your life is only ever going to get worse and worse and harder and harder and you're gonna have more you're gonna regret the stuff you've done because you'll have done such awful stuff that that you know it, it only goes down and so um so if you've gone down a lot uh, getting free from that is bringing you up but at a certain point it just brings you back to the norm which is really low and and, and is, is miserable for most people so so i think that um to to really be successful 
with, uh, with being free from drugs, you want to be also building as much, I mean, depending where you are, you might have to just focus on, on freeing yourself or, or, or getting started and everything. But, but at a certain point, you want to make sure that you have a lot of positive things in your life and that you're, just, that you're growing as an individual. Because that's where I think the deepest, some of the deepest happiness comes from is, is from knowing that uh, I'm, I'm better today than I was yesterday and I'm, I know more and I'm more able and I have better friends or better relationships and, and, uh, and better job, better pay, better this, better that, any, any, anything that you want, um, uh, are you moving towards that? And, um, and one thing to keep in mind with uh, self-improvement and, and learning new things and mastering new things and being, becoming the best at new things and, and, and things that you never imagined you could do is that um, it, it takes three years to become a black belt. And uh, no, that's it. It doesn't take very long. Um, it takes 10 years maybe to master something even you know, significantly deeply. But, but, um, but three years is enough to be at a black belt level. And, uh, but the first six weeks is uh, always the pits. And you, you, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's learning to drive or if it's learning computer science or if it's, if it's learning martial arts or, or, I don't know, learning how to pick up girls or meet girls. You know? um, uh, I mean, all, these are all things that you can learn um, at the beginning you're going to think to yourself, I'm terrible, I don't know what to do, uh, I know I'm doing it poorly, and, and I, I feel like I look like a dork, and probably look like a dork, uh, that's six weeks, right? And you have to, you, you expect it, and, and, it, and it's, it's tough too, because you're going to be thinking to yourself, uh, I'm trying to learn computer science, and none of this stuff makes sense, and everybody else seems to understand it, but I have no idea what's going on, I don't even know the first word. And, um, uh, and, and so the, those first six weeks are tough, um, but you power through it, or you just you just expect it, and you know that I mean that's the beginning. You're a white belt at the beginning, and and uh, uh, six weeks later, you you if you do it, you know, and and any one of these things that you want to learn, you have to do them regularly, two or three times a week, in order to really uh, uh, be able to remember what you did last time and think about it for a couple of days and get better and think about what you need to do to be better. And anyway, and. Um, uh, you you so so then after the six weeks then you start actually really enjoying it and slowly but surely becoming better and better and better and better and better until finally you're you're a master at whatever it is that, that you decided to learn so so I think that um, one of the keys to uh, to to this process is that you're you're you want to be you, you want to be happy in life you don't want to be miserable you want to be feeling great all the time you want to wake up feeling great you want to go to bed feeling great you want to feel great during the day you want to be having fun you want to be laughing you want to be you know doing the stuff that you want to do you don't want to be in a I mean you can't even be in a crappy job if, if you're a crack addict right but but you don't want to just be in a crappy job watching tv every night and, and not ad advancing or, or, or improving in any way you want much much more than that and so so quitting is uh, quitting your, your, your drug is, is the, the beginning of what puts you on that road to, to the sun. And, and, uh, and so that's what you, I think, that's what can help also where if you're only going to meetings but everything else in your life is, is kind of standstill, then maybe um, you, you, when people feel that life is, is not going well, uh, they feel like giving up and, and so on, and, and maybe that, that'll make them jump into the wrong thing. Um, so, so try to maybe add something to your life that's, that's a, a new skill that you're building, and, and you take your time. And, I mean, um, it might take you five years to get a black belt instead of three years because you're starting from, from I don't know, maybe massive obesity or, or, or God, knows, God knows what, but, but it doesn't matter because you're, you're, you know that you're getting better all the time and, and, and you're having fun. I mean, you should be having fun um, when, when you're doing it. So, so in any case, um, I hope that was helpful and that it will be helpful. Um, the, uh, the mental aspect of, of telling yourself um, that, that, that that mantra of, of you know don't don't think about it don't don't rethink you cannot allow yourself to re-examine your decision 
when you start re-examining it, that's when you start rationalizing. That's when you, your, your, your subconscious starts presenting completely bogus reasons for doing what you shouldn't do. And just because you want it deep down inside, you're going to go with the bogus rationalization. You, you, your brain is, is, that's the way it works. And you have to understand that in order to, to really break free and, and to be happy. So actually one thing that, uh, that may help uh, and that's kind of interesting is tapping. So um, you can look this up on YouTube and, and elsewhere. Um, it's very interesting. So the best explanation I heard for it is that um, we have a, a most evolved part of our brain that understands language and so on, but then we have older parts of our brain and more basic ones that are say more animal or, or, or reptile or reptilian. and uh, those parts of the brain cannot be reasoned with and it can't be talked to in, in a way that, that achieves anything. And so, um, uh, so if you think of, uh, let's say you have a, a dog that is uh, really upset and, and that's barking and, and that wants something. And, and uh, but what's the point of talking to the dog and saying, bad dog, you know, calm down, you should wait till next week or you should do this and, and so on. It, it doesn't work at all and the dog is just going to keep going. Uh, instead, what you should, what, what can work is to just pet the dog and, and calm it down and say, it's okay, it's okay, you're a good dog, you know, blah, 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 this and that. So, so tapping um, aims for the same thing, and, it, and I think it's very interesting also just in general to move away from this idea that we can, ra we can reason with our subconscious and, and, and that it, it, as long as we talk, talk through it all, that it'll, it'll all make sense and we'll, we'll figure it out. There's some part of us that, you know, we just haven't figured it out. But, but in fact, it's, it's that the, the part of you, and so where this, uh, so, so tapping works extremely well for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, if you've suffered from trauma uh, of any kind, um, uh, tapping can, can really, really make a huge difference. I mean, MK Ultra victims seemingly uh, recover in, 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 psychically, let's say, from, from their trauma in, in large part because of this, um, apparently, where it can really help them a lot. And, and if it can help them, it can help you, and it, it helps uh, soldiers and, and rape victims and so on. But um, it can also help with things like um, uh, procrastination. So you have a part of you that doesn't want to do it, that doesn't want to do the work, and, but you can't reason with that part of you. And, um, and, and so the tapping, uh, the way it works is that you, you, you basically tap uh, acupressure points. So uh, points like this and here and, uh, and here and so on. And so um, uh, when, when you look, uh, just looking at the videos uh, that you'll find on YouTube, um, it, the, the tapping goes in hand in hand with uh, verbalization and with uh, with thoughts so so you think about uh, for example and I imagine this should work or help could help with with addiction as well is that there's a there's a part of you that uh, that wants the drug and and that's not going to go away you can't rationalize with this part of you it's it's you can't I mean I think that some of the things I said earlier about how the drug is not desirable and is not positive, in fact, that it's a false positive. Those are things that can help a little bit, but, but even then, only so much. And, and a lot of the anxiety that you feel during uh, a withdrawal uh, attack is, um, comes from this, this uh, anxiety from, from two parts of you being in conflict with one another. And so, so I think that perhaps what, what could help is, is also uh, tapping, where um, and, and the tapes are really interesting because they, they make you they make you say or they, these videos that people make to teach tapping or to share it with people. Um, generally, you'll say to yourself uh, that that uh, you you think about the the part of you that that is the subconscious uh, part that either doesn't want to work or, or doesn't want to you know do do that's procrastinating or that wants the drug, for example, and you say. Um, that you so so you'll, you'll see in the videos. That I'll put a link to a procrastinating one, uh, an anti-procrastinating one that I like uh, in, in the in the video, but um, or in the notes of the video. But um, the uh, so you, so you say to yourself that that you you accept yourself. You try to think of the emo of, of that part of you that 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 is that is rebel that is that is the the druggie in you, and you and you you don't you 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 hug it basically. You tell it that 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 you love. 
every part of yourself. You, you, you accept yourself entirely. And, and what you do is you, you tap and you say, this feeling, this feeling. You know, and, 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 uh, and tapping those points releases tension and and just is, is it's a, it's really powerful so uh, so that's something that, that I think I mean uh, it, it makes sense that it could help and and I think it's interesting um, and uh, and in general it's a good thing to know especially for things like post-traumatic stress disorder and so on but um, but in any case uh, so this will really be that that's the end of the, the video it's maybe too long already but um, maybe the, the last thing to say too is is again with the the, the don't think about it the, the you know that you're free, uh, or you really become free from your addiction when it become when your decision to not ever do the drug again is a hundred percent absolute, categorical, and, and never revisited. So when I said earlier that that you can rethink when you're not having a nick fit, no, you should never rethink because you know you have a million reasons for never. For, I mean, I know I should never take cocaine or anything like that. I, I don't need to think about it like, hmm, you know, that's a pretty girl. Maybe I should do cocaine with her. No, no, no. That's that's a crack whore, in my opinion. And I, I pity her and, and I have no interest in, in becoming a cocaine addict. So, so, uh, so the thing is that you really want to work as hard as possible to get to the point where you where it is a categorical categorical imperative where it's it's a hundred percent there's no doubt there's no questioning there's not even a need to tell yourself don't think about it because you it, you just don't and and the 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 difficulty you have with the withdrawal symptoms and, and the tem the amount of temptation you have and, and the anxiety that you feel all of those nearly disappear or are lessened once you stop re-examining it and 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 that's the the key thing of that don't think about it is that it's not there's no anxiety there's actually a feeling of winning when you tell yourself that don't think about it and it's it's only when you start questioning and thinking oh i know i shouldn't but but you know i'm gonna revisit i'm gonna think about it still and and then let myself um debate internally and, and have this this really uh, uh tense moment where I know I shouldn't but I really want to and so on so so freeing yourself from that is is, is wonderful and and uh, you can really really look forward to um, life getting better day by day and and, uh, and that's a wonderful thing and and and, and mixing in the, the self-improvement so that you don't end up in, in a in a dead-end situation in life where you think well maybe I should just you know burn out rather than fade away no that's that's terrible and and you should never be letting yourself think that that you're in a dead end spot you're, you're if you're in a dead end spot it's because you're, you're not doing enough self-improvement you're not thinking of enough new things you're watching too much tv so anyhow good luck bye